Hit me, Darwin. Check, check, very loud. Welcome everybody to Hibiscus Sports Complex here in Brisbane as the Southwest Metro Pirates host the Gladstone Port City Power in women's QBL action presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. I'm John Guana and tonight I'm joined as always by my man, former Pirate player, coach, general manager. What else have you done here at Pirates? It's none other than Dave Derwin. Dave. S swept the floor. You've done everything here, uh, no doubt about it. Should be a pretty exciting game. Gladstone on the second game of uh, they played last night down at North Gold Coast. Dropped a really uh, tough loss for them last night. 91-67 down at North Gold Coast. And uh, not only did they drop that game, they lost um, their new import, Tanea Atkinson. She sprained her ankle. 
Uh, it's a tough loss for them. She's hopefully going to be okay. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anything serious, speaking to Coach Cooper before the game, uh, but she's not going to be able to suit up tonight. It was always going to be a tough matchup for Gladstone uh, taking on the Southwest Metro Pirates. Just a little bit tougher now. Absolutely, and uh, again, some of the girls are going to step up um, to cover that loss. Um, it's always tough when, when a key player goes down, so um, they've all got to um, come together and uh, have a nice, pro possibly change the game plan a little bit um, and try and make it maybe a little bit scrappier in order to create some offense. Um, but they got, they'll have a task ahead of them. They definitely do have a task ahead of them. The Southwest Metro Pirates come into tonight off the back of a loss. It was an 82-70 loss, their first one of the season last week versus Townsville. They did not have Nicole Seacamp for that one. They will not have Seacamp tonight, but I think they'll be okay. Kalani Purcell will make her debut for the Southwest Metro Pirates tonight against Gladstone. She's a real difference maker in the women's competition. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, a lot of people are talking about last week's loss as uh, the uh, the winner or loser will, will host the finals. So that was an absolute tough loss for the Pirates. Um, maybe not the greatest time to, for Gladstone to be getting them because uh, you'd assume they might be a bit angry tonight and take it out on, on uh, the ladies from up north. Yeah, well, the, the Pirates definitely want to bounce back. They did lose that one. It was an 82-70 loss uh, in that game. Maddie Willie hurt her ankle as well, so she didn't play the, the full game. She seems to be okay and healthy tonight. You know that she's going to want to come out and, and make uh, make a statement here versus Gladstone. Yeah, I think, and also, they uh, again, they want to get into, uh, they'll try and work on their deficiencies last week and uh, and look to, to bounce back, get back in the winner's column, six and one for the season. Um, and, uh, again, they, they get a, a great deal of um, scoring and options from across the floor so they're you know they're a really strong group and yeah, that game last week was uh like you said a lot of people did say it was for potentially hosting a, a grand final there's still a lot of basketball to be played so you have to think parts move on from that one and this is the next task at hand uh gladstone though comes into tonight they're struggling a little bit they're one and six they're towards the bottom of the table we saw them last season make a run uh, into the semifinals. so a bit of a down year for the port city power women you got to think, though, that they're going to come out with all they've got. But it definitely hurts losing Tanea Atkinson. They had big wraps on her. Hopefully she'll recover and, and come back quickly for them. Yeah, a little bit of a, 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 a fact is the, the power beat the Pirates for the championship. I'm going to go with, uh, what do you reckon? I'm just, I don't, you know what? I don't know. You know uh, up, in, up in Gladstone and uh, tough loss for the Pirates. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Gladstone's put strong teams together for many years. Uh, this year's uh, not one of their stronger groups, but, um, you know, they're still battling every week. Now I'm going to have to go and do my research <laughs> and, and work out the year, mate. Gladstone starters are Carolee Wilson, uh, Mila Nainai, Ashley kelman -Poto, Amanda Frost, and Jordan Smith. And you see Southwest getting underway with Charmaine Mellers, who played for Gladstone last year, Maddie Willie, Steph Barristow. Sarah Ellsworthy and Nat Taylor. We're underway here and Gladstone has possession first. The first opportunity to put points on the board. Good inside out look. Frost driving baseline. Left handed lab is short. Mellers comes down with it for Southwest. Bear says, oh, I thought she was far in that one. Maybe a little too early for Steph. Nat Taylor has it now. Eight on the shot clock. She's going to fire a three that's off the back of the rim. Nat Taylor comes into tonight, Dave, shooting at a blistering 50% from three. Yeah, the Pirates are um, second in three-point made uh, for the season, Johnny, uh, and fourth in percentage. So they, they take a few and they certainly make a few which is something that Gladstone is going to have to defend. Gone into a, a zone here early on. Zone, you have to think we'll see a, a lot of that from Gladstone tonight as Bearstow's shot rolls in and out Almost just because of depth, yeah. si simply depth. I think that ball was 89% in and then popped out. First bucket of the night went to Ashley kelman Poto, so Gladstone has an early 2-0 lead here. Skip pass for Frost. She's going to fire a deep three. It's off the back of the rim. Tipped out of bounds off the hands of Nat Taylor. So Gladstone with a fresh shot clock and possession.
Crossed in the corner now, drives baseline on Ellsworthy, flips it up and in. Gladstone out to the quick 4-0 lead. Yeah, a couple of good drives from Frost early. Really good penetration. Not much help from the Pirates. The zone is causing a bit of issues for Southwest. Bearstow open look, misses again. Don't see Steph Bearstow miss too many of those from the free throw line. No, and you, you can't really complain. I mean, they're, they're, they're good looks. I know they haven't gone down, but uh, they're being patient, moving the ball, spacing's been good early. Foul inside goes against Mellers. Mellers has had to play a bit of four and five with this roster. She's more than capable of doing it though. She does a great job defensively. Yeah. And uh, a beast on the O board as well. I think she's third in the league in O board. So, uh, you know, love that she competes on both ends. There's seven on the shot clock. Pass is nearly stolen. Frost winds up with it in the corner. She's gonna have to fire as she does and misses. Here comes Nat Taylor with the breakout dribble. Good transition defense from Gladstone, slows down the parts. Ellsworthy fires a three that's short. Mellers recovers it and gets it out to Nat Taylor. Now Ellsworthy. Pretty good pace though from uh, Southwest. This is, the, this is the kind of pace they want to play at. Yeah. They want to push. Yeah, I think so too. Frost is going to fire at top of the key three. That's in and out. You, you, you would think from Gladson's perspective, you want to be a little more patient offensively. Yeah, I think they really want to try and fatigue the Pirates as best they can. Taylor that, hit the wing trifecta. And she's definitely a three-point threat. As we said, shooting 50% coming into tonight. Jump shot is off. That's from Nainai, the captain of Gladstone. Here comes Nat Taylor again with the head of steam. Tries to get it to Bearstow. She does inside. Another inside pass to Ellsworthy. Flirter's good. Nice interior pass there from Bearstow to Ellsworthy. Yeah. Oh, and then Sarah Ellsworthy can't believe the whistle. She gets called for the reach in. That's the second team foul. First personal on Sarah Ellsworthy. I think Coach Cheney's looking to maybe turn up the defensive pressure a little bit there. Pick him up a um, bit more than half court, which is probably a good idea. I'm going to guess, um, you know, six, six, seven, eight, nine might get minutes on the road. And so if you can fatigue the starters, then. And we saw Coach Cheney do that a few weeks ago when we had the Pirates uh, Toowoomba matchup. The Pirates came out a bit sl slow, and Coach Cheney went to the press to try and get the troops going as Mellers hits another jump shot. And Coach Cooper has seen enough. He's going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. 5.43 to go in the first. Pirates on a 7-0 run to take the lead by three. Your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Welcome back to Hibiscus Sports Complex. The Pirates up 3-7-4 over Gladstone on your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Good time out there from Coach Cooper. Things were getting a little uh, haywire there, I guess, is for lack of a better term for Gladstone. Yeah, well, uh, they're, in their, they're in their zone, which is, um, which is good, but, uh, geez, you could drive a truck through some of the gaps at the moment um, that, they, that the girls are, are in, so there's a lot of space. 
Pirates getting high, um, high post catches whenever they feel like it. Um, or little shook, or little little dump off passes if they drive base. So lots of gaps in that in that zone currently. Here's a turnover. There's a backcourt violation against Gladstone. Should also mention tonight's referees. You got Maddie Crowley and the umpire uh, Kate O'Brien. Do you like the two referees? I know that's a bit old school. It, we see it in the women's. The men have their three. Yeah, I, I um. Should I, uh, maybe I'll be careful on this response, Johnny. I don't know. I think uh, there's nothing wrong with the two. So if there's three, they, they shouldn't get a call wrong, right? <laughs> We're all human, Dave. Yeah, I know. We're all human. Uh, Maddie Willie, though, hits the three, increasing the lead to six. Pass is tipped. Jump shot is short. There's Nat Taylor again looking to push the pace. Kalani Purcell getting set to check in for her first minutes of the season here for the Southwest Metro Pirates. Willie shoots an air ball. I don't know that uh, this is the pace Gladstone want to be playing though, Johnny. Well, you can see they look uh, they look tired already, Dave, yeah. and we're five and a half minutes into the game. Yeah. Good work on the glass. Frost winds up with it. That's Kelman Poto keeping it alive for Gladson. She fires a hook shot that's too strong. Battle inside. Mellers tosses it out of bounds off of Gladstone. <laughs> Kelly Page and Kalani Purcell going to check in. Maddie Willie and Charmaine Mellers going to get a breather. Ellsworthy running the point now. She's been a, one of one of my standout players in the women's competition for me uh, throughout the, this early. I guess it's, we're actually at the halfway point. It's not early season anymore. Yeah. Nice touch pass. Taylor fires a three. That's an air ball. You see on Purcell's first touch of the ball, that's just a nice touch, yeah. no-look pass. Absolutely. That's just class. Just created, uh, created a little more gap. Nine Eye, the captain of Gladstone, goes inside. Nice pick and roll play there. Good finish by Kelman Poto. Gladstone scores for the first time in about five minutes. Whoa. Ellsworthy a little too excited. Throws the ball out of bounds on the other end. She saw, I think she saw, saw Sean Kemp on the baseline, Johnny. That was the Rain Man. That was up there. Well, Purcell, Purcell's a good player, but I don't know if she's. <laughs> got, I don't know. I don't know if I would compare her to Sean Kemp. I know I, you weren't doing that, but. No. Great player, Purcell, but Sean Kemp, there, there hasn't been many like him. No. If you'd compare him to anybody, who would it be in the modern game? Maybe well, maybe uh, Blake Griffith, maybe. A little bit. A little bit, Griffin. Uh, Going to give that one to Kelly Page, reaching in. The third team foul for Southwest. They lead by four. Yeah, it's interesting. Now they're uh, too busy shooting threes, Johnny. He wasn't a shooter, Sean Kemp, that's he, for sure. He wasn't. That's, <laughs> the, that's the old school power, power forward. Ellsworthy tips it out of bounds. That's what I love about Ellsworthy's game. She's always really, really active defensively. It doesn't matter who she's m marking. She quite often gets a hand, and there she comes up with the steal again. Just working constantly defensively. Yeah. Really, really active and good motor. Purcell finds Ellsworthy. Baseline jump shot's too strong. Good rebound there by Kelman Poto. And now Wilson gonna slow things down for Gladstone. Nice oh, look inside. Move. Great dish from Nine-Eye to Kelman Poto. They're a great combination here early for Gladstone. The lead cut to two. Good skip to Page, now inside for Purcell. Out to Taylor, she'll fire the wing three, that's in and out. Mellers with the offensive rebound. She's gonna fade away and Ooh. banks it home. Sweet little Nowitzki move right there. The one footer, that's a bit of your game there, D-Love, the, the old fadeaway bank shot. Great move, after she's cleaning the glass and uh, tough fadeaway. 12-8 the lead for Pirates here, 2.20 to go in the first quarter. 
Brandon Bailey now for Gladstone. Spins on Ellsworthy. Flips up a wild one. Purcell comes down with it. Southwest looking to run. Matt Taylor in the corner. Skips it inside. Purcell recovers the pass. Hands off for Mellers. Now Page in the corner with 10 on the shot clock. Purcell on the free throw line. Jump shot is off, but she's fouled. That's going to go against Carolee Wilson. Her first personal, the team's first, and Purcell going to go to the free throw line for her first two free throws of the QBL season. Still thinking about how good that Nene crossover was. That was fantastic. They have a really nice combo, and you see Coach Cooper, he's, he's rotating about six, seven players. Purcell hits the first one, leads up to five now. Second attempt is good as well. 14-8 the lead now for Pirates. Frost, nice hesitation dribble, reverses off. And Nainai has it. Good ball movement. Bailey going to throw up the floater. It's too strong. Battle for the rebound goes out of bounds off of Gladstone. Southwest ball. Minute 30 to go in the first. Yeah, good patience from Gladstone. That's more like the, the tape, the pace they want. Again, move the, move the D. Be patient. Look for some of the mistakes from the Pirates. Nice pass from Purcell to Mellers. Can't finish, but she's fouled. Yeah, all class from Purcell. Great vision. She had her options with uh, Maddie Willie there as well. They both were saying, hit me. That's a tough pass, too, Come, cutting right down the key against the zone. Yeah. Well, Gladstone's really got a they're, – they're, they're so wide in the zone, scared of the three-point three point attempts and percentage, which is fair. Um, but it, what it's creating is the high post is just so, so many gaps. If the Pirates just keep, keep sending a simple cutter through, they seem to be getting the ball every time. Yeah, Tad, that's one of the weak spots in the zone. You got the short corner and the high post. Yeah, and uh, and the, the Pirates aren't beating them with penetration. They're just they're just beating them with um, simple passing at the moment. Purcell gets called for the blocking foul. It's the fourth team foul. First one on Purcell. Frost thought about the three, puts it on the deck against Willie, flips one up. She's fouled by Maddie Willie. Well, better job from Willie. She, she actually got burned a couple times earlier in the quarter. She did a better job of um, moving her feet and putting her chest, chest up with good D. Uh, just had a little bit of a hack at the end. So Mellers and Paige get a breather. But they certainly need Frost to continue her um, probing and penetration. And she's been aggressive here early, only has two points. Make it three. You got to be a threat, though. That, and th that's something that we talked about a couple weeks back when we were down at Ipswich. When you, ha when you, you have to be a threat on the court, yeah. no matter who you are, one through five. Yeah. Because if you're, if you're not, that just gives the defense an extra defender. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and, and they'll pick up on it. The defense will pick up on it. And they'll be, you know, listen, sag off number 16. She's never going to shoot the ball. Great um, recognition there from Milo and Nainai well with the steal and the finish. Yeah, they've done a good job to peg it back to three. It kind of feels as though it's south, we've been talking a lot southwest, but Gladstone's just hanging around in yeah. there. The zone is, uh, effect, has been effective for him. Turnover is hurting the Pirates, though. Nearly turned it over here. Possession arrow favors southwest, so it's going to stay with the Pirates with eight seconds on the shot clock. Willie goes inside of Purcell. Beatson's jump shot is good from Amanda Beatson. That's that inside touch you talked about. Yeah. Gladstone can hold for the final shot in the first quarter. 
Frost has it with six on the shot clock. Thought about a deep one. Drives instead. Layup is good. That's a great finish there from Amanda Frost. And the clock is going to expire on the first quarter with Southwest leading 17-14. Pretty impressive quarter of action from both teams. I thought Southwest was going to pull away with it there. Good timeout by Coach Cooper. And uh, Gladstone pulled themselves within three. Yeah, really free-flowing. couple of... Um, just careless turnovers down this end. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the Gladstone defense is, is, cr is, you know, really tough at the moment. I just think a little bit sloppy from the Pirates. Maybe um, I think Coach Chaney might give them a bit of a rocket here at this first quarter just to really get them going. I think they, they really should be up by more than three. They definitely should be. We'll see what they can do. We'll come back with the second quarter of action. It's 17-14. Pirates over Gladstone in your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here at Hibiscus Sports Complex, heading into the start of the second quarter to 17-14 lead. Pirates over the Gladstone Port City Power. Dave, I know you're taking a look at some of the statistics. What's jumping out at you at the break? Uh, well, just again, the Pirates only got a couple of turnovers um, according to the stat sheet. It felt like a few more than that, but uh, uh, the, the um, you know, Gladstone's looked really good <coughs> in transition uh, and then also being you know, quite patient so far, which is which is exactly how you'd want to play tonight. They really want to try and um, get the ball through some hands, burn a bit of clock. Oh, that's a hard foul there. Beats in unintentionally, smashing into Brianna Bailey. Bailey a little shaken up. That's what you call a short closeout. Well, I think that was would have been handy if Queensland did a bit more of that on Wednesday night. <laughs> Bailey okay though, thankfully. Pirates coming out in a bit of zone here to start the quarter as well. Dave, what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, well, that's interesting. I think um, it might be uh, a little bit around uh, some of the Gladstone penetration in the first quarter that maybe Coach Cheney's not happy with. Um, and again, just maybe shifting it up a little bit here. There's six on the shot clock, so Gladstone has to fire a deep one from Frost. That's off the back of the rim. Another great rebound there from Kelman Poto. Yeah, it's always the risk when you go to a zone you uh, can have the potential to lose your rebounding coverage if you don't communicate and move well. Bailey's another, another offensive off. rebound. And it's it's Kelman Poto chasing it down. Gladstone playing with great energy on the offensive end. As Purcell comes up with the steal, kicks ahead to Matty Willey. Left-handed layup is off from Willey. Ball will knock that out of bounds by Parker for the Pirates, so Gladstone recovers. Yeah, pa pa um, Parker, sorry, one of the young young Pirates getting some action. You know, I, I like seeing uh, teams giving their young players uh, an, a spot yeah. and giving them some time. It's one thing to train with the team, but to get game time is invaluable, I a think. Absolutely. Kelman Poto's three is off. Another oh. offensive rebound. Big block by Purcell. I don't think so. Bear still getting a breather. Matt Taylor checks in. There's 14 on the shot clock for Gladstone. Jordan Smith lab is no good. Tipped around and Frost recovers for Gladstone. Yeah, well executed out of bounds play. 
Purcell with the steal again. This time she's gonna take it herself and she finishes with the left hand. There's the first points of the quarter to Kalani Purcell. Purcell again with the steal. That's a bad pass. It's a four on two for Parra. It's no look. Willie back to Purcell. Layup is good. And Jordan Smith goes down. Looks like she's really hurt her wrist. She's going to try and walk it off. She's all right, thankfully. She's Coach Cooper going to give her a breather, though. He's definitely favoring that wrist. Checking back in, Carolee Wilson for Gladstone. Mellers and Ellsworthy also check in for Pirates. Really active hands there from Nat Taylor getting another tip of the ball on the defensive end. Baseline jump shot good there from Nanai. Yeah, they've done a good job of just being patient tonight so far. The power girls. And this is where their sort of their weakness in the zone is that they've still got to guard someone. Purcell, second oh. offensive rebound, big foul there from Amanda Frost. That's a good foul. Purcell looks like she's a little shaken up. Didn't want the help up. The uh, Pirates coaching staff looking for a bit of an intentional and I can't really blame them actually. There was a there was a, a hard whole lot of whole lot of foul. It was def and, and I know it's not the old days. I mean the old days, no problem, good foul. These days that's you know, moves into flagrant category pretty much if you look at them the wrong way. Well, I'm just gonna call it a, a, a foul there on Amanda Frost. Purcell gonna go to the free throw line for a couple shots. This game's presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Live Sport Australia showcasing Australian sport online. If you haven't done so already, make sure you visit the Facebook page. Give them a like. Keep up to date with all the other news on Australian sport and streaming throughout our great country. That's right, Johnny. Wilson going to fire top of the key three. That rattles home. It's a two-point deficit now for Gladstone. A lot of Gladstone faithful here tonight as well, Dave. Yeah, there is a good crowd for the women's game. Absolutely. I did notice the van they came in. Did they, did they come down in that, the whole team, both teams? Well, I like didn't, Coach Cooper didn't, uh, didn't give me that news, so I'm not 100% sure. Mellers fouled inside like by Wilson. It looked like it was like a you know, 21 seater. I'm guessing there was maybe two of them, right? Surely. You would think, I mean, I, I hope so. Between the two teams, the coaching staff, maybe a couple fans, family, who knows? Yeah. Mellers going to step to the free throw line for a couple. It's the first. I've been impressed with Gladstone so far. Hanging around, really slowing the parts down, forcing them to kind of taking away that transition. They've done a good job against the Southwest pressure as well. Yeah. Bailey goes over the top of the press. Frost looks inside. Hook shot is off. Good D from Willie under the under the rim helping. Taylor lost it. Luckily it went to Ellsworthy. Barristow blocked by Nanai, and she's going to run. Kicks ahead to Frost. Frost goes back to Nanai, and it's stolen by Mellers. Jump ball, possession arrow favors Southwest. Yeah, unfortunately, Frost uh, really telegraphed it, and she should have just uh, put it back out and looked for you know secondary transition options. But Nanai, she's been good. She's been good. She's been really good. She's probably been uh, one of the best for Gladstone here so far tonight. Don't forget, we'll have the men's game coming up for you next. Uh, Gladstone men will be coming in with a lot of confidence, picking up their second win in a row last night against North Gold Coast. That, that, and that can be all, all it is, you know, a couple of win or two to change everything. And, and to be honest, the Pirate men haven't been playing well this year. So... 
uh, if I'm Gladstone, I'm, I'm excited to come in and give it a good track. Frost on the sideline, moves it out of bounds off of Nat Taylor. Looks like Coach Cheney's going to take a timeout, so we'll take one as well with about six minutes to go in the first half. It's Pirates 23 over Gladstone 19. New QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here at Hibiscus Sports Complex. 6.02 to go in the first half. It's Pirates 23 over Gladstone 19. Neither team really shooting the ball pretty that well from the field, Dave, at the moment. But the teams are capitalizing it, as is Milar Nainai. The nice hook shot cut the deficit to two for Gladstone. Yeah, it's just been, uh, it's been a really even game so far. Which, as you say, is funny because it's sort of, if you're watching it with your naked eye, uh, you know, Pirates have been certainly well in control. Mellers pass a bit too strong for Bearstow. Turnover, that's turnover number three for the Pirates. It feels like a lot more than three, Dave. Yeah, I think the stats have been a bit generous to them. Ellsworthy comes up with the steal. Good hustle there by Frost, tipping it out of bounds from behind on Ellsworthy. And I like this from Gladstone, the men as well. You see the Gladstone men out here supporting the women, at least in the first half. Willie's going to fire a three that's short. Mellers, though, steals the offensive rebound and gets it back in the corner. Oh. Barristow fighting inside with Kelman Poto. They're going to get Kelman Poto for the foul. Her first, the team's third in the quarter. Matt Taylor in the corner, she'll fire a three. Bounces around, somehow Taylor recovers it but loses it out of bounds. She disagreed with that call. She felt, she felt it was still in. Mellers with another steal. Gladstone trying to go over the top. Miscommunication there from Willie and Mellers. Another turnover wow, for the Pirates. Wow, super sloppy second quarter here. It's a super low scoring affair as well with that sloppiness. It's a 7-6 yeah, quarter Coach to Gladstone. Ch Coach Cheney's about to do a blood vessel. Um, they've had about four or five really good transition opportunities that they've blown. Not with anything that Gladstone's done. Gladstone hanging around. My Mai wants to back in against Ellsworthy. She loses the ball. Mellers comes up with it. Now Taylor has it going one on one with Bailey. There's Mellers at the elbow. Jump shot is short. Wow. Ice cold here tonight at the, par at the pirate ship for uh, the girls. Bailey, great pass inside. Kelman Poto. With the layup, ties the game at 23. Kalani Purcell getting set to check back in. 8 to 24, Johnny, for the Pirates so far. Ellsworthy long two is good. <laughs> Ellsworthy 
Nice cross over there from Bailey. Splits the defense. Finds Frost in the corner. Wide open three. It's too strong. Barristow then tied up. They're going to call a jump ball. And that's again, that's that hustle there from Gladstone. Kelman Poto ties it up. Gets Gladstone a possession. They're going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. 3.46 to go in the first. It's a two point lead for the Pirates over Gladstone in your QBL game of the week. Presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Good time out there from the Gladstone Port City Power. They're down two. Just want to give the team a bit of a breather. It's not what you want out of a timeout, though. A turnover, but then Ellsworthy and turns it right back. And another one. I think you said it best, David. It's a very sloppy quarter from both teams. Well, it's been a, uh, an atrocious quarter from both teams. Uh, I think um, yeah, they've been a bit generous on the, st on the turnover stats. Wilson, I, I, I like what Gladstone has done though, Dave. They're playing, they're playing at their pace. They're not getting caught up in what the Pirates want to do. Yeah. They're not letting the Pirates pressure, trapping, anything really affect them. They're, they're sticking to their game plan, and that's why they're only down two. Yeah, it's a bit, it's um, um, you know, sloppy, and the sloppiness would be really frustrating because none of the girls have really gotten it going so far. And Frost gets called for the offensive foul. They, um, they're sharing the ball well, which is, which is good, and they're certainly competing, getting up and down, um, but uh, you know, just not looking like a smooth machine at the moment. It's not a, um, it's not a novel zone that you'd see here either from Gladstone. It's your standard 2-3 yeah. two, two, zone, uh, but it really has caused the Pirates some problems. Yeah, well, they've, they've really settled a little bit for uh, for the for the three. Another another turnover. Um, yeah, they, they've really settled for the three instead of uh, looking to get a bit more penetration. Turnover leads to a bucket there. Nat Taylor lays it in. Oh, unlucky. Willie wanted it to stay with the part. She tipped it out of bounds. She said it went off Frost. The referees disagreed. Yeah, I thought it did too. Great job from Willie getting up and in. And uh, now the Pirates picking up full court, which is what I like. Want to try and turn the, Absolutely. turn the screws a little bit here. And, and you don't worry about winning the game in the second quarter. You, you fatigue them out. So in the third and fourth, they start making some bad decisions. And it's another turnover there from Gladstone. Bailey turns it over. Kick ahead inside. Purcell fouled by Kelman Poto. So that's going to send... Kalani Purcell back to the free throw line. Purcell is two of four from the charity stripe so far. Purcell hits the first one. Second one is off. Then tipped out of bounds by Nat Taylor, so it's gonna stay with Gladstone. 2.47 to go in the first half. Not sure who they gave that one to. Looks like it was an offensive foul. 
against Ashley Kelman Poto. That's her third personal. That'd be a big loss for Coach Cooper. Yeah, I think he's got to get her out. Two minutes to go. He's going to the bench. Jordan Smith going to check back in. Haven't seen her since she took that little stack with her wrist. Looks like the wrist is okay, though. Kelman Poto is going to have to take a breather for the, you'd think at least for the rest of the half. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a safe play. They certainly need her in the game in order to be competitive. Ellsworthy with a give and go from Mellers. Skip pass over to Purcell. Mellers finds Purcell. Back to Mellers. Lamp is off. Tipped around. Somehow Brianna Bailey comes up with it for Gladstone. Kicks it to Frost in the corner. Oh, sneaky step there. The old Euro step. She can't hit the lab, but she's fouled. She'll go to line for a couple shots. She's Willie does a good job. Ma Maddie, uh, she's got a hand of about six or seven offensive re uh, rebounds. Or sorry, both ends of the floor. She may not get credit for it, but uh, she certainly competes and just tips it and keeps it active. Doing a great, doing a great job. Yeah, w Willie comes into tonight averaging just about 17 points a game. Also, a little over seven rebounds a game. So, don't have to contribute. And this is what telling my, my young son, who's only just started playing basketball, he's very focused on scoring the ball, but you can contribute in so many other ways if you're not, even if you're not scoring the ball. Yeah, I think I say that to the men I play with. <laughs> <laughs> Who've been playing 20 years. It's true, Double everyone everyone likes their score. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, as much as uh, Curry's been amazing for the, the game, uh, he's also Possibly uh, ruined a, a little bit of uh, little league action because now all kids want to do is load up and shoot threes when they can't catch a ball or pivot first. Well, it's not just at the lower levels, Dave. It's the, the three-point shot is here to stay. And you, you see, I, I'd love to do a comparison in the, in the QBL in both the men and the women's competitions. I, I'm sure that we're averaging at least 10 to 15 more three three point attempts per game just from last year to this. Yeah, I think what this was the stat that we talked about last week with the, with the Brisbane men, they're averaging uh, 42 threes a game. I think they're yeah. le league leaders in attempts. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I looked at, when I, when I looked at the statistics for these two teams as Coach Chaney is going to call a timeout. He's not happy. Turnover is really hurting the parts. We'll keep it here though. You look at the, these two teams, right? The Pirates last week shot 7 of 21. Gladstone last night, again, in their loss to North Gla Gold Coast, 7 of 28. Mm. That's a high number of three-point attempts for teams that typically don't shoot the ball all that well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it is. Just because it's worth more doesn't mean they, can sh they should be <laughs> shooting it. Um, I think, and if you look at Houston, I think the stat this year, which is pretty, mi pretty mi mind-blowing, for the first time in the history of the NBA, they shot more threes than twos. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it, it, it's, I, I don't know if it's, it's a lifesaver, really, isn't it? I yeah. Mean, but, but, but what happens to, to me is they, I think players are, feel like they have to add it to their game now because it is the modern game is the three-point shot. Yeah. But some people just aren't built or right. aren't meant to shoot threes. No, I, I think, and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll go in peaks and troughs. Obviously, in the 90s, you had the, the you know, unbelievable centers of the Ewings and Elijah ones and O'Neills and Warnings. And so, you know, points in the paint were, were cool. And now, now it's changed a little bit and everything's more pick and pop and spacing. But I think the teams that um, do, a, do a good job are those that, that, that balance the mix. So, you know, Golden State gets that probably doesn't get it's the credit it deserves for its balanced offense. Like they are in and out. They had Bogut. Um, you know, every now and then they kick it into Green, who's not a great post player, but still they have good floor balance. Yep. And so uh, versus the the Phoenix Suns and the Houston's of the world, it's cute for a while, but really when it matters, you you, you live and die. Well, you're going to yeah. shoot all the threes and you're going to lose a lot. Yeah. Well, um, that definitely happened uh, with Houston in the in the conference finals. Yeah, and, and and Cleveland too. I mean, at the same time, you know, LeBron was made a lot of magical passes, but his guys missed, and so they lost. Um, yeah, I, I still I still take a good balanced um, roster any day where I've got a decent post threat, um, you know, good penetration, rebounding, good defenders, 
guys and girls who play their roles. Well, that's one of the. It's always going to win out. But to me, that's one of the downsides of this three-point heavy game is that teams don't know how to use a talented big anymore. No. Y you know, you have guys with size that can probably play inside, but coaches and, and teammates don't know, don't even know how to do a post entry. No. Um, so, so you almost waste the big man if you have a talented big man because no one knows how to use him. No. Well, you've seen in Minnesota, there's rumors that, you know, Cat's not happy. I mean, there's no way they can trade the, uh, probably the, the, one of the most franchise worthy guys in the NBA at the moment. Um, but again, they're not using him as they could. Champion's gonna fire the baseline jumper. That's good from Grace Champion. Five points to lead now for Pirates. Get back to the action here. We got about a minute 20 to go. Smith gets it to fall. She's still favoring that wrist. And she fell over on earlier in the quarter. Yeah, Powell's gonna sit in this zone still. <coughs> They're doing it. I mean, they're doing a good job. Southwest firing away from deep as Purcell gets an offensive rebound and puts it back in. The zone's working. Don't, don't. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Yeah. Well, they've held, they've held them to 32. Um, fouls out called there on Carly Wilson. Gladstone's in the penalty, so Ellsworthy's going to go to line for a couple free throw opportunities. Yeah, a little unlucky there. Ellsworthy's, uh, she, she got the call, but she's got to box out earlier first instead of uh, making an athletic competition every time. Probably just a bit lucky to get that call. That's also uh, Wilson's third personal, so a bit of foul trouble here for Gladstone. See Aaron Gear for the first time this evening. Ellsworthy hits them both. Willie's going to check in for Ellsworthy. Also see Kia Guinea in oh. for the first time tonight for Gladstone, and there's a turnover. Thought Pirates might try and go two for one. They still may as Champion fires a three. Ooh. That's good from Grace Champion. Sweet looking Jimmy. Similar spots. Jump shot from Bailey's off. Tipped out of bounds, off the hands. Yeah, that's the, this is the kind of tempo that Gladson do not want to be playing, I don't think. Got to give credit to Jordan Smith. She's in a lot of pain. She's just sucking it up and par powering through this wrist pain that she has. Yeah. They have another game tomorrow, Johnny? I, I think have they to do. double check the yeah. schedule. Willie open for three. She'll fire, and it's short. Gladstone won't get a shot off and heading into the halftime break. It's a 10 point lead for Southwest, 37-27. Pirates really picked up the pace a little bit to end that second quarter after that roasting they got from Coach Cheney in that timeout. Yeah, yeah, and I think, um, again, just some of that, uh, some of the defensive pressures, you know, got him fatigued, got Gladstone a bit fatigued in the last couple of minutes. So Pirates got a little bit of advantage. Um, again, we'll see if there's a what, which, which sort of Pirates come out and start early. I think, again, they need to ramp up the energy and, uh, you know, try and get a 15 to 20 point lead. Well, they have a 10 point lead now. It is halftime. We'll take a break as well. We'll come back with some halftime statistics in the second half of action here in your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia.
Welcome back to Hibiscus Sports Complex. It's halftime here. Southwest Metro Pirates lead the Gladstone Port City Power Breakers 37-27. Taking a look at some of the halftime statistics leading the way for the Southwest Metro Pirates. Kalani Purcell in her debut game, top scoring for the Pirates at the moment. She's got nine points and four rebounds, three of which are offensive. She's also got two assists, showing her all-around game. Nat Taylor's got eight points on three of seven shooting, two of five from three. Uh, Charmaine Mellers has seven points, also six rebounds. Pirates have um, 20 total rebounds, eight offensive. Compare that to Gladstone's 27 rebounds, 11 of which is offensive. Doing a pretty good job on the glass there, uh, Port City. They're being led on the score sheet by Milar. Nine I, uh, eight points, five rebounds. They do have a bit of foul trouble though, Gladstone. You've got Kelman Poto, Ashley Kelman Poto with three personals, as well as Carolee Wilson. Sloppy first half for both teams, Dave. What do uh, each team need to do in the second half to, to get the win? Well, I think Gladstone, um, Again, I, I like their poise and patience, generally speaking. Um, sometimes they raced, they rushed it a little, um, which is not the, the pace and tempo they wanted. For me. I think there was 16 turnovers for Gladstone in the first quarter, uh, first half. So they ju they've just got to clean that up. I mean, you're not going to be competitive throwing, throwing the ball away 20 to 25 times in a game. So, um, And if I'm the Pirates, I, I, I want to turn the heat up. You know, they got a, uh, Gladstone's got another game tomorrow. Um, Pirates have a, a pretty deep squad. And, uh, you know, again, applying pressure, in particular full court or some trapping action to really fatigue this power group. Well, they went uh, to a bit of a press to end that first half, and it was a bit effective, forcing those turnovers. I think really, to me, on the it's really on the offensive end where Pirates have struggled as Willie comes out firing. Shows us a little KD special. Yeah, Willie has been really has been excellent for Pirates this e so far this season. Frost finds Smith. She'll fire the wing three. That's off the front of the rim. Yeah, good closeout from Mellers, Mellers as well. Uh, closed out a little short. Is that number four? Oh, no, that wasn't number four. Mila Nainai picks up. Gladstone fans would have. Her first. Could have been really angry there, but they're okay. She's Wilson is playing with danger, and that could be bad for her. They're going to give that one to Bailey, Brianna Bailey, picking up the personal. I'm oh, sorry, I thought I thought it was Bailey who had three, but it's not. Want to take this time to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, the Australian Sports Network. They support us in all the live streaming we do we do here at Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. A great uh, team down in Sydney, James Bowman and the Australian Sports Network. Definitely get in touch with them. You can give their Facebook page a like. Send them a message if you need any live streaming or graphic support. James does a great job for us, and uh, we can't thank him enough. Lead is up to 13 now for Pirates. Frost. Working off the screen. She's going to fire a three. That's good. Nothing but the bottom of the, the net there from Amanda Frost. Deficit um, is 10. She certainly raised up really confidently. Big three. Willie out to Barristow, uses the pump fake. Through the contact, she's fouled. It's going to go on 9-9. It's her second personal. The third team foul already, a minute 20 into the second half for Gladstone. Yeah, two quick ones on the captain. She'll have to be careful here. Just giving Besto again, just a little bit too much up and in. Needs to maintain a bit better gap. Maybe give give Besto the jump shot before the drive. Well, she's certainly a talented shooter. She hasn't shot the ball that well so far this evening. No. There's that trap you're looking for. Frost in a bit of trouble. Finds Bailey. Bailey, nice aggressive. Power dribble, Wilson's gonna fire the three. That's good as well. Gladstone yeah. with back-to-back -back threes. I think that's okay though, as far as, you know, speeding the pace up a little bit. Um, and again, they, they Gladstone went for a quick penetrating three. Um, they made it, good on them. That's a think, great dish yeah, from Yeah, I think they'd be okay with it. 
think they want, when you go with that you trap and your press, you don't always need to force a turnover. No, absolutely. Frost in a bit of trouble, pass tipped out of bounds. There's five seconds to go on the shot clock for Gladstone. Let's see what they got on the baseline out of bounds. Frost has it. Good Step deep. back. Good deep from Ellsworthy. Moved the feet really well and, and got a good hand up. Here's Barristow for three. That's wet. And it's a 14 point lead now for the Pirates. I think this is the start Coach Cheney was after. That one's way off by Jordan Smith. And here come the Pirates running. Barristow finds Ellsworthy. She fires a deep one that's short. Here comes Frost trying to go the whole way. Looking for the foul call. I'm gonna say possession stays with Gladstone. I'm gonna say he went off the back of Sarah Ellsworthy. Yeah. Little lucky. Frost a bit out of control. Thought you was CP3 there for a moment with the little extended, <laughs> extended uh, under underhand layup. Pass inside, stolen. Ellsworthy comes up with it. Matt Taylor inside, Mellers. And it looks like they're gonna get Bailey for the blocking foul. Fourth team foul on Gladstone. And that's the second on Bailey. Bear's getting subbed out. No, she's not getting subbed out. Uh, she said she just needs a bandage. She's got a little, a little cut. Oh, it looks like. I say she's getting hot. Yeah, she's starting to heat up, but says so coach, leave me alone. I'm good. <laughs> Purcell getting set to check in for the Pirates. They're up 14-47-33. Got to give a shout out to Charmaine Mellers with the steak and eggs socks as well. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's that's strong sock game right there. Uh, how can you seriously read that, Johnny? I saw it in the pregame warm up. Oh, okay. <laughs> she had them pulled all the way up. Steak and eggs, eh? okay. I like that. I like that. Well, Purcell's going to give a little bit of run with the multicolored business sock look. Couple of missed labs there. Bailey looks like she's in a bit of trouble. Might have got a Charlie Horse or a Cork or something. And Coach Cooper gonna take a timeout. His troops looking a little worse for the wear at the moment. So he takes a timeout. We'll take one as well. 6.45 to go in the third. Pirates up 15 over the Gladstone Port City Power Breakers on your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here at Hibiscus Sports Complex. John Guarna and Dave Derwin on the commentary for you tonight. 48-33. Pirates doing a much better job taking care of the ball here in the second half and really making Gladson pay for those turnovers. Yeah, they are. Much better start from the Pirates. Uh, again, no doubt they would have got a bit of a roasting from Cheney at the, at the half. And they're ext again extending into a bit of a half-court trap here. 
Ellsworthy ne nearly came up with the steal. Now Gladstone has it. Frost skips over to Bailey. She's going to fire a wow. deep three. It's a bank shot. Then a lot of contact inside. They're going to get Bailey for this one as well. That's, that's, the a fifth, cool. that's the 15 foul. That's Bailey's third personal, I believe. No, I'm, I'm giving up on the foul counts in my head, okay? Right, Gladstone's in the penalty now, so Southwest goes through the free throw line on every foul now. Yeah, I'm not, that's a bit of an ill-advised three ball with uh, a bit of time on the clock still. Ellsworthy hits the first. Second one is good as well. Page back on the court for Pirates. Gladstone's got Nanai, Bailey, Frost. Nice pass. Smith and Wilson. Smith just couldn't handle that nice pass, yeah, unfortunately great, for Gladstone. Yeah, great pass from Nanai again. Frost with a little Jimmy baseline. She's been really good for them tonight. She's probably have to had to take on a little bit too much for them, at least at this point. Would have loved to have seen them play with Tanaya Atkinson, their second import. As Bears though fires at the top of the key three, that's short. Nanai has it for Gladstone, gets it over to Bailey now. Thought Bailey was gonna pop that one. Wilson for Gladstone. Didn't travel. Now Bailey's gonna have to step into a long three. She can't bank it home. I thought she was trying to LeBron James it then, Johnny. Oh, I'll throw it up and, and smash it, hey? Yeah. That was pretty that was pretty amazing. Yeah, that. they uh geez, the the power girls really struggled the last couple sets um, offensively. Just really lost. Not sure what they're trying to get in. Um, and again, I think the fatigue's obviously a big factor at the moment. Yeah, no, no, I did not get a breather at all in the first half. You can see her taking a few deep ones, walking up the court. Yeah, I think they need Kelman Poto back in. She just gives them a, another um, another focal point offensively. No, no, it's hook shot blocked by Purcell. Then Barristow is fouled there by Wilson. Oh, they're going to get Barristow for the travel. Yeah. Sorry. Coach Cooper must have heard you. Checking in Ashley Kelman Poto. And Aaron Gear going to check in as well. Frost and Smith getting breathers. Kelman Poto going right at Kelani Purcell, who steals it. Bairstow has it now pushing up court, dumps it off. Nearly lost by Taylor. She recovers. Maddie Willie on the wing now for the three. Rattles home. Good recovery and nice ball movement to get it to Willie. Yeah. Page tips it out of bounds. It's 18 points to the lead now for Pirates. It's a 13 8 third quarter start for Southwest. Sorry, 16. Gear dumps it into the captain. Ref. <laughs> So I think Ooh, that could be it now. Yeah. For Carolee Wilson. I don't think she knows yet either. No, uh, she does now. She picked up. She picked up the offensive foul. And then the technical foul as well. Yeah, I don't, 
I think uh, Bear, didn't do, Bear didn't do anything wrong. I think she held the ground. Wilson didn't like it. That's going to be it. That was it. And had a couple of <laughs> and had a couple of goes at it. Uh, uh, if Carol Lee Wilson gets the uh, early exit, Barristow hit the tech foul. Yeah, well she can start thinking Suteri about... Voto Rosova in for the Pirates. She can start thinking about the Gold Coast. Gold Coast tomorrow, I think it's a 1 o'clock tip. Waves in the morning, you know. If you're Gladstone, you're definitely going sh straight from here to the Gold Coast tonight, aren't you? You'd like to think they are. Voto Rosova with the three. The lead is now 22 for Southwest. Bailey nearly traveled again. Kalman Poto has her shot blocked by Purcell. Purcell's doing work down there. I think that's her third block. Willie gets the pass. She's going to slow things down for Pirates. Finds Mellers. Mellers no look to Purcell, who saves it. Now they're going to say it went out of bounds. That's a turnover for Southwest. You hear Coach Chaney. He wants the pressure on Gladstone. Kid Guinea back in for Gladstone as well. And I over to Frost now with two on the shot clock. Frost loses it out of bounds. That's a shot clock violation. Kalani Purcell has a good laugh as she got her ankles broken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Willie had her back. Good help position, and Frost went straight in there and uh, lost the ball as the shot clock expired. Good ball movement leads to a Willie corner three that's short. Gets her on rebound, dumps it inside for Mellers who misses the layup. Gee, they missed second some bunnies. Attempt. They have missed some bunnies tonight. Yeah, second attempt was missed too, and then Kelman Pardo got the rebound. She was fouled from behind. Looks like that one was on Kalani Purcell. That's her second. 41% for the for the game so far. Mamai has it. Now out to Kelman Poto. They do a good job getting it to Frost. Mamai's hook shot is uh, too strong. Purcell's pass tipped out of bounds there by Gear. Good hands by Gear. Checking into the game. Neve Tratt is going to get Kalani Purcell a breather. Fifty-seven thirty-five, the lead here for Southwest. Willie's going to fire a top of the key three. That's too strong. Don't forget, we will have the men's game following this one. Should be a good matchup. Pirates come into tonight off the back of a tough loss to Townsville last week, while Gladstone comes in as Frost finishes plus the foul. Yeah, great take. Good take there. A nice aggressive finish by Frost. Uh, the Gladstone men, though, come in off their first two wins of the season, back-to-back -back wins. Should be a pretty good matchup here at Hibiscus. Yeah, I mean, you know, two and five is their uh, their record and sitting 13th on the ladder. Um, but, but again, uh, it'll, it'll be really interesting to see how they can play because um, they've got some guys who can score the ball. Uh, Pirates, let's be frank, they're not playing them very well at the moment. So uh, it's not like that we're going into the Mackay, the... the uh, Mackay, the heart of Mackay, and uh, trying to steal a win. Um, you know, a lot of the guys really enjoy playing at Hibiscus. Uh, they really enjoy the floor, actually. They really, you know, good lighting and a good court. So it's not like the Pirates have a super advantage like some other teams. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Gladstone got every ounce of every bit of confidence to come in and, and get a win. Deep three is too short, long they rebound. They, they didn't play any D last night with uh, against the Hawks. Uh, one 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 five one one zero. So uh, yeah. 
I'd love to see a high scoring affair like that. Yeah, Coach uh, Walmsley doesn't have the troops tightening it up too much on the defensive end. He wants to get run and gun. So it should be an exciting game for the men's, ac men's matchup. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go when the Pirates scored 56 last weekend. Oh, we've seen them. We've seen them score a, a bit more than that before. They certainly have some offensive firepower. The the parts as well. Mellers loses it out of bounds. About a minute ten to go here in the third quarter. Parts lead has ballooned to 22. Yeah, just what the doctor ordered for the doctor ordered for the Pirates, 22-11 plus 11 quarter. That's long. Gear shoots an air ball. Mellers kicks ahead for Kelly Page. Neve Tratt wasn't ready for yeah, it. Yeah, got to get your mitts up. Mamai nearly had it stolen. Good spin move. Her pass tipped out of bounds though by Mellers. It was a good move, but then just a rushed pass. Yeah. Inbounds out to the captain, Mamai. Oh, good crossover. Coming Poto hits the jump shot. Hope she's up there doing some indos with some of those Gladstone kids teaching them how to do a crossover. That's a nice she low she snap. Got, she got a better crossover than most of the men running around. Willie from the elbow, jump shot short. Yeah, good screen from Tratt. Good chase down from Tratt as well. Willie will have the final shot of the third quarter to three, and it's good. Lead back up to 22, and that's going to be it for the end of the third quarter. A nice finish there from the Pirates, really putting their foot down on the throats of Gladstone there in the third, Dave. Yeah, really, you know, great quarter. I think it would probably be about 25-11 or I think, or maybe even more. So, um, you know, they really extended it you know, six, seven points like we talked about. They probably, Jason would have had a goal of about, you know, 15 to 20 point lead minimum coming into the fourth. So they're on track. Um, and again, he, he wants to get better. I mean, every week they want to try and get better. So he'll run some kids, no doubt, in the, in the fourth now. Um, but he'll still want to have the same sort of standards and the same sort of structures that uh, everyone can have some success with. Well, it's the end of the third. We'll see if the Pirates can maintain that success. They're up 23, 63, 40, heading into the fourth. Your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Back with you here for the final quarter of action. Pirates up 23. Taking a quick look at some of the statistics. It was a big quarter for the Pirates. They doubled up 26-13 over Gladstone in that third. Miss from Page on one end. Frost has it now for Gladstone. Fakes the pass. Yeah, she was a bit dirty about the no call. Probably fair too. I thought, um, well, there's an offensive. Um, 
Yeah, I thought Willie would maybe just a bit late on that. Mellers with the moving screen on Frost. Votoversova on there with Page. Willie, Beetson, and Mellers. Mamai, Kelman Pato, Frost, Guinea, and Gear for Gladstone. Mamai thought about the jumper. Said she hands off for gear. Gear ribs trying oh, to get to the basket. D. Oh, unlucky. The wild, wild attempt, but Sateri Voto Rosova got her with the body. So going to the free throw line is Erin Gear. She's hit all four of her free throw attempts so far this season, Dave. Solid 100%, mate. Game presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. Live Sport Australia showcasing Australian sports online. Make sure you visit their Facebook page and give it a like to keep up to date with all the Australian sport streaming across the country. Yeah, well, the Pirates have uh, got everyone in the game so far, and you'd, you'd assume they're, they're going to play a bit more in this fourth. Parker and Kelly Page are the only two yet to score for the Pirates. Page looking inside. Bearstow kicks it out for Ellsworthy. Floater is short. Beats and tips it around. Mama it, comes down with it. It was a floater without much floating, Johnny. <laughs> it was a little, uh, it was pretty low. But good, good, uh, good footwork. Just didn't get it, just didn't get it up. And you can't do that. Out of bounds. Can't jump out of bounds, catch it coming back in. Gear getting set to inbounds. Oh. Mama wasn't ready for it. Kelman Poto comes down with it though. Mama has it with six on the shot clock. She's got to get something going here. Nice pick and roll from Kelman Poto. A good finish. Yeah, really good finish. Page doing a good job def denying Frost there. Uh, that possession. Another floater from Ellsworthy short. There's five on the shot clock. Ellsworthy skips it over to Bearstow in the corner, driving baseline, pulls up, it's short. And Gear pulls it down for Gladstone. Yeah, good offense from the Pirates. Again, they're being patient, they're moving the ball, trying to stay in their stuff. Frost gonna fire a wing three, that's too strong. Ellsworthy over to Page. Inside for Votorosova. Finds Beatson who can't finish. Second attempt is no good, but she's fouled on her way up. Great pass from Votorosova. It's a mouthful. Say that three times fast. John. I've done it already and I'm struggling each time. She Coach didn't. Cooper. Yeah, great, great. Really nice putt, uh, pass, little touch pass on the baseline drive. Beatson's gonna attempt two free throws when we come back from this timeout. It's 7-10 to go in the final stanza. It's 63-44 Pirates over Gladstone and your QBO Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia.
Amanda Beatson hits the first free throw, putting the lead back at 24 Southwest. Second one good as well. Beatson gonna get a breather. Kalani Purcell checking back in for Southwest. Frost picks up her dribble. Got herself in a bit of trouble there. It's back though in Frost's hands. Six on the shot clock for Gladstone. Guinea has it. Gonna have to get a shot off soon. Goes inside Kelman Poto. Nice oh, wow. catch. That's that's some shot clock awareness right there. And a steal from Frost. Oh, good D. And a little cheap one from Frost. It's a frustration foul there from Frost. Ellsworthy showing you her nimble feet, staying in front. And the strength too, that's not easy to yeah. step or you know slide and step backwards and steal the, rip the ball out yeah, of the yeah. opposition's hand. So I've seen Ellsworthy do that. I swear I'm sure it's been every time I've, we've covered the parts. Taylor hits the three. Sweet looking Jimmy there. Been doing that for a while now. Yeah. We talked about in the in the pregame a little bit, Johnny. Uh, second in three pointers made this year, the Pirates, and fourth in three point percentage. Good steal from Ellsworthy. She saves it from going out of bounds. Pass though, stolen by Gear. Got a little excited. I don't, I don't know who she was passing to. I think she was too busy trying to work the tightrope of the sideline. But uh, you know, you can you can give her a little bit of a fault after a tremendous steal and keeping the ball in play. Frost and Nanai. Number one in steals to the Pirates this year, uh, Johnny. So again, they do a good job of uh, getting uh, their hands up, being active and forced in the action. Good block there from Smith on Barstow. And then Barstow loses it out of bounds. 17 steals tonight. That'll help them out. That'll help their stats out. Well, they certainly play an aggressive brand of basketball. Ellsworthy's got seven. I did say seven. Well, she averages, I think she averages about three a game, nearly four. Yeah, well, they've got, uh, you know, Seacamp uh, and Nat Taylor are both high in the, in the top ten as well. But, uh, you know, turnovers galore here for the power, 25 for the night so, to, so far. How much of that do you put down to uh, fatigue? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, um, you know, again, the Pirates have obviously got a squad, so you know they're doing a good job of uh, of being active. Um, but you know, again, Johnny, it's only it's a minus one for the Pirates here in the fourth. I mean, that you know that you know you don't shut up shop. You don't shut up shop and go. We're up twenty. Let's play the kids. Um, you know, they really need to um, you know keep on building. And, and really putting teams to the sword. You know, I'm not sure if Jason's aware already um, around, as I said, that minus one for the, f for the first five minutes of the fourth, which isn't going to be too pleasing. There's Ellsworthy again tying up well, the opposition. Yeah, it was a really bad pass. Um, they've, they've run some stuff out of bounds, and they've just struggled to really execute, just really get the ball in. Rest in peace to George Michael. Yeah. I love this song. I thought Purcell was going to fire there. Champion. Champion will, though. She prefers the left wing. <laughs> Good D. Oh. Taylor was just helping out the referees, <laughs> explaining what really happened. Gear steps into a long two, it's off. And Bearstow recovers and is fouled by Smith. 
when you bring in a player like this, uh, like uh, Kalani Purcell, into round seven, you've already played six, seven games. Yep. How difficult is it to incorporate a, a player really like easy. a Purcell? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm serious, though, because no, no. the Pirates that were playing really good ball. Uh, yeah. oh, no, they didn't have their greatest game last week, but... I think uh, quality player, that looks good, a bit short. Um, just like that, um, you know, quality players can just come in. I mean, the Pirates did it a little bit last year with uh, kicks coming in, and, and um, I think that maybe didn't work as well. So I, I take your point, Johnny. Um, but, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Purcell's obviously a class player. Uh, evidenced, evidenced tonight by, uh, and again, these are, let's just go with three-quarter stats, but, um, you know, yeah, 9.7 rebounds, three blocks, two steals, etc. Uh, and again, what I really like is presenting herself uh, at that high post, making the, not, not the assist pass, but the hockey assist, um, again, putting the defense under pressure. So she really plays that high post really well. Um, she hasn't really been looking for her offense not really at so all, far yeah. tonight. Yeah. Champion goes one or two at the free throw line. Oh, a little double dribble. Bailey's three-pointer is good for Brianna Bailey. Well, we'll just see if we can uh, get Parker a bucket, and all the Pirates will then score. Parker's about to check back in for the last few minutes to get a bit of action. Matt Taylor hit a three off the pass from Kalani Purcell. Be interesting to see this Pirates team when they're all here together. Missing uh, Nicole Seacamp tonight. Barristow gets called for the foul, battling for position with Smith inside. Parker and Tratt gonna check in. For Ellsworthy and Barristow, you gotta think that's gonna be it for Barristow and Ellsworthy tonight. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the, what the stat books are, Johnny, for the Pirate women, but I'm going to say eight steals has got to be up there for all time. Steals record in a game. Certainly would be. They just turned it over, though, on the other end. Champion couldn't handle the Nat Taylor pass. Bailey gets the screen. She thought about the three. I just uh, noticed, Johnny, that uh, V-Dub Jr., with the brace on, not playing tonight. Yeah, he's still out with that ankle injury. Spoke to um, Pirates coaches. They think hopefully maybe next week or the or the week after he'll be back. And then you could see the Pirates have struggled without him. That's what I came to watch, man. He's an excitement machine, Bro Williams Jr. Bailey in a bit of trouble. Gets it out to Kelman Poto. With six on the shot clock, she skips it to Smith. Her three is up, in and out. Taylor skips it over to Champion. Rips baseline, jump shot up and short. Heading about to the two minute mark. The lights are on <laughs> in the pirate ship. The uh, Gladstone coach is calling for a timeout. I'm not sure what that's about. With a uh, minute 50 to go and down 30. Champion skips it. There's Parker's three. It's up. It's short. Oh, Purcell M1. recovers. Gets it to fall plus the foul. Coach Cooper going to take a timeout with a minute 20 to go. Minute 30, I should say, in the game. We'll take a quick one as well, and we'll come back with the final minute 30 of the game here on your QBL Game of the Week, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia.
Back with you at Hibiscus Sports Complex. A minute 34 to go in the game. Kalani Purcell finishes the three-point play. Maddie Willie gonna check in for Purcell. It's a minute 34 to go. 78-49 the score. I think the Pirates will be pretty happy with tonight overall. Uh, a little sloppy with the turnovers. Uh, maybe a little sloppier than sloppy. 20, to, uh, just <coughs> excuse me. Definitely a, a little sloppy from the Pirates. They were very scrappy. It was a very scrappy first half as well. We, we know Coach Cheney was quite upset <laughs> with his team's performance at points in that game. Yeah, I think the other, the other one, I, I, if I was... Uh, Jason, we'd be looking at the, those points off turnovers. They really struggled to convert in trans, which is a bit disappointing. Um, and just another thing where, you know, those really good teams need to, need to excel at that. Calvin Pardo can't finish. It's tipped around. Tratt yeah. comes down with it. Yeah, good job, Tratt, keeping her hands up. Willie for three is what I thought was going to happen. I, I thought she was going to step right <laughs> into that one as well. Champion will fire a three, though. Good tip by Trapp to go. Parker. All the Pirates on the board. And with that bucket, every single Pirate who's seen the court has hit for a couple points. Good tap there though by Trapp. She tapped yeah. it straight to Parker for the tip, for the shot. There's Parker with the steal. She hasn't tipped away out of bounds by Gear. It's gonna stay with the Pirates. 20, just about 24 seconds to go. At a two and a half second differential on the shot clock and game clock. Willie to champion, nearly has it stolen, recovers, drives baseline. Parker will fire the elbow jumper, it's too strong. Bailey has it. Take a quick look at some statistics, Dave. It's gonna be a Pirates win. Yeah, sure, Willie. Uh Willie will finish with 11 points, Besto 11, Ellsworthy 9 points, and the uh, super impressive 8 steals. Taylor with 11, Mellers with 8, Beats in 4, Purcell 12. So really balanced uh, uh, effort here from the Pirate women. Um, you know, super efficient. And for the power, uh, it, it's not going to be difficult to say that Frost was their best. She played really well. Six Finished with 16 points. Um, and uh, Kelman Poto did a good job as well, finishing with 12 they just were a little undermanned, and and, uh, and the score reflected it. And I just want to ask you about uh, the Pirates, Dave. You know that they have championship aspirations. Took that tough loss to Townsville. Pretty good bounce back for them this this evening. Yeah, it took them, you know, 27 minutes maybe to get into it. But, uh, again, good third quarter um, and, and, and fourth quarter maybe a little disappointing. Um, but as I said, they ran, ran the bench a little bit. Finished plus plus eight, um, but overall, you know, you got to look at the scoreboard and say, well, 30 points is a pretty handy win. Um, but equally, too, you, you you should have put up 30 on the board against Gladstone. To be fair, yeah. Well, it was a final score of 80 to 49. That's going to do it for us here. We will be bringing you the men's game between the Gladstone Port City Power and the Southwest Metro Pirates. I got to thank Joel Baker on the production panel, Chris Sieber on the camera. I got to thank James Bowman uh, from Australian Sports Network for all his graphics and support. For my co-commentator, Dave Derwin, I'm John Guarna. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to another presentation of QBL Basketball by Nothing But Net Media and Live Sport Australia. <laughs>